My name is Carolyn R. Saunders. I have been in New Hampshire in some way, some fashion, for about 15 years now. Now, that sounds like a very long time, and I agree that it is, but most of that time had been spent um, on the road, so not knowing the community. I moved, I'm a New Yorker, first and foremost. I, I live in New Hampshire, I'm a New Yorker. Okay, that's my home, my family, I go back as often as I can. That's where I feel most alive, if you will. So I've been here, but I've been here by myself and on the road and working, etc. So I didn't really know a lot about the community. And I had a, um, there came a time where I had an opportunity to stop. And I realized how alone I was. It was, I felt as alone as I thought I was. But I knew there had to be some other people here. Um, because just by dint of us having been here for 400 years, you knew there were people somewhere, but I never saw them in my daily life. So I actually sought out the few people I knew, and I was introduced to um, Jerry Ann Bogus, the executive director of the Black Heritage Trail. Being a New Yorker, coming from New York, you don't think about these things, and I hadn't really, cons I hadn't considered, I just figured I'm moving, and then when I got here, it was like, oh my gosh, where do I have my hair done? You know, things that you took for granted because, you know, every two weeks or whatever you would have, because that was the day of the little page, so everybody had their little hair done. Um, and then I cut my hair at one point in Boston, and I was going back and forth to Boston, and then I started going back and forth to New York and because I had two-strand twists, and they did them there, but that would take 12 hours and then the drive there. So it, there were so many things I'd never considered because I... I'd never been in such a small environment, and I'd never been in an environment where I didn't see at least someone who looked like me. Maybe, I don't know, it wasn't every day, because I was in an industry also where I didn't see many African Americans, period, even when I was in New York, you know, for a time. But when I came here, there was just such a dearth, and I was just so shocked. But you know how it is, you come, you work, you do a job, you're involved. You don't think about that all the time. You don't think about your selfness all the time. You just do what you need to do. And it's those weekends sometimes, or when you do go home to New York or wherever, where you think, "Oh my gosh, you you've missed it." I used to go home and and just take it in. I'd always I'd say take in my people, and my pace would you know quicken because, as you said, this is so different, so much slower, so much everything so different from New York and then people would ask me well how do you like it how do you compare and one thing I told them you don't compare and, and that's a good thing because I have learned to appreciate things for what they are you know and so New York um, New York offers the world of things to me but New Hampshire has its its beauties also and I have to say everyone I've met I think maybe especially when I first came they were a little shocked to see me but they were always welcoming and so, uh, you know, that's always been nice, and it's always, it's as though, for a long part, I was living the, you know what they say about 11 o'clock on Sunday, the most segregated hour. That's how I felt about <laughs> a lot of this. I'd go in, and, and they'd see me, and it's like, oh, okay, and, and people would talk eventually, because they didn't have a lot of people who look like me coming through, and then you get to know people on a, just a personal level, and, and I think basically we, we all have the same things in common in terms of what we want or whatever, but it was just getting, and I can't say I am accustomed to seeing so few, but, you know, I told you I'd be all over the place. Finding the Black Heritage Trail of New Hampshire was what I was kind of looking for. I wanted some community, and I wanted some consistency of the community, and I wanted to be involved with a group that was doing things and what they do in terms of dialogue and the programs and I have to put in a plug for Jerry Ann Bogus because I think she's one of the most creative people I have ever met um, creative and selfless and in terms of putting together great programs she does that um, so people come out who want to know more about the community and come on we've been here 400 years we were here we may not be here in numbers 
but we're here. And those stories, like stories all over about African Americans, have oftentimes been buried. So I think the work they're doing to bring these stories to the forefront, and also not just history, but current events. You know, um, we had a program last week about the media and you know the different impact social media not social media but all media has and and the perception and how media kind of can change and warp things and then we also have a program coming up about health care and things next i think it's next week so relevant um items not just history which is also relevant but current and relevant I'm learning, which is wonderful, because I, I, I always like to learn things. And people who come through this door are people who are interested in the African-American community, interested in telling the whole truth of the Americas, curious because they never expected to see this in the middle of downtown Portsmouth. And until um, March of uh, 2017, 2018, this building was not here, or Black Heritage Trail of New Hampshire was not housed here. So this has been something for the community to embrace, too. And it's been, it's been good. It's a learning experience, and you, you just learn to take, take everything one step at a time and appreciate. Yeah, appreciation and gratitude are big right now, right? So that's what... Um, that's what I try to do. I discovered that the community was a lot deeper than I thought in terms of there are many more families that I would have thought who are still here whose roots run very, very deep in New Hampshire. And can I also put in a plug, I also uh, do some things with the African American Historic and Genealogical Society in New England. And so I meet a lot of people from Massachusetts who, again, they've delved deeply into their, their family history, the genealogy. And I have been surprised sometimes by how deep those roots are and um, it, how deep, how wide, how long. And they stretch from Nova Scotia um, and to the south. And, and there was one, we had someone come in and her name escapes me right now, but she actually traced her family back to Africa and she was able to meet cousins. You know, it, it was, it's a fabulous story. I'll tell you that offline. Um, so I found out things like that and I found that people are, are curious. They, uh, most of the people who live here that I've encountered they didn't know because, you know, they see what they see. So we're here and we broaden their worlds too. People want to learn, I think. So that's what I've learned, that people are more open and want to learn. And, and as I said, I've learned that some of these histories go even deeper than I thought. And the other thing that I knew, but we never, I don't, th I didn't think we spoke much about it or enough about it. You know, when you hear African American history, so oftentimes you talk about the enslaved. It's nice to hear the stories about the people who were not enslaved or the mm -hmm. people who were once enslaved and their lives changed. You know, so that's what I'm hearing more. And I'm doing a little more, um, right now I was just doing some delving into the AME uh, church. And there's some beginnings in Exeter, New Hampshire, with the Paul family, etc. So I'm lear I'm just learning more. And you know what it is. The more you want to learn, the more you do learn, because you're curious, and that curiosity propels you. So it's all good.